get old for some reason. I don't know why. Um, no, 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 leave it, it's fine. <laughs> Who's, whose was that? Tim? Tim's drinking coffee? What time is it right now? Five? I'm pretty sure it's, that's, that's... That's not coffee time, that's... Apple juice time. Um, as my daughter would say, I want juice. Can Daddy get a jupy up here? Uh, I don't, is somebody joining me? Or is it just me? Really, it's just me? I get nervous alone. Can I have somebody come up here? Uh, yeah, yeah. Get up here, I dare you. You take some questions. She's getting up, she's like, don't tell me. I'm, I'm, March right up there and ask questions. Um, how's everybody enjoying the weekend so far? So not so good? Um, that's good, that's good. Who's been your favorite uh, panel so far? Aside from me, I mean, I, that's an obvious answer. So nobody? Let's see if we can get him. Really? Old rookie Gill coming, coming in, uh, making some headway. I like that. You know, Gill is uh, what? The effort just goes down. Oh, good. I was just about to, I was just about to pour some stupid water. Um, this is an interesting apple juice glass. Yeah, that's. How many how many uh, Americans do we have in the crowd right now? For those I don't know if they have that this in uh, England or Italy or anywhere else in Europe. Um, tree top, apple juice. Anybody? Yeah, that was that's what this is. Uh, well, look, it's, uh, it's, it's so fun to, to come here. We, we love coming to Rome. Um, I know we've got some, uh, some visitors here. I know we've got some locals here. I know we've got some, uh, um, people that have driven here, flown here, uh, biked here, apparently. <laughs> kind of moron does that. Um, so uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're all super stoked to be here and, and we're, we're thankful that you give us a reason to come here. Uh, not that Rome isn't a city that you want to come to anyway, because it's amazing, um, but you guys really make it special. So uh, thank you for, for uh, that's, that's the apple juice talking. Uh, but um, uh, no, I, I just, I, I wanted to, say a sincere thanks uh, for, for keeping us coming back, uh, not only to Rome every year, but to television every year, because uh, it, is, it is you that, that keeps us employed, keeps us uh, going on this crazy train that is supernatural, and um, next year is going to be interesting, not going to lie, I talked about this in my meet and greet, uh, we have a whole, a whole shift of, of change of people uh, coming into the show. Luckily, not much in the way of cast and not much in the way of crew, uh, but we've, lost, we've, we've had some writers move on, we've had some, uh, some editors move on, we've had some producers move on, we've had, uh, we've had a lot of change, so um, I, uh, I know that you guys are, are, are awesome and amazing and very forgiving, um, and hopefully you won't have to be. Because I, I think that uh, I think that we've got a really cool road ahead of us, and I think we've got some cool stories to tell. And and, and I do know the people that are in, are in charge right now, and they will not lead us astray. So uh, have confidence in us. Um, let's start with some questions. How about you over there? Hi. Um, if you could choose any either historical drama, 
thriller, fantasy, science fiction thing to direct, what would it be? <laughs> I've got to make it hard? Well, I did. Oh, your question. Thanks. Thanks. Dawn of the days of favorite color. I don't know, so easy. Um, thanks, I got a good laugh in the back, I appreciate it. Hot crap. Uh, no comedy elbows yet. I haven't reached that point. Um, mm, that's, that's really tough. Um, I will say that I have a, and I think I've actually said this before, um, there is a project that does not exist, but it exists in my mind. <laughs> but it, it refers to an old song. Does that count? If you can explain it, then yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, if you make sense of what the hell you're talking about. Right now. Um, so, some of you are familiar with the old Marty Robbins tune, El Paso? Look it up. Okay, so it's an old cowboy song my, my dad used to play on vinyl. And um, uh, I always thought that that story that he tells in that song would make a really cool short film. And I always wanted to direct that. Um, so, see, I, I, I think reasonable. I don't think like, uh, I'd like to read your Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I'm like, mm, how about I just make a short film about a song I heard many years ago when I was a kid. Uh, so, any, but honestly, that, that's been something. And then there's, um, there's other projects that I, I hope to do in the future and I, I wish I could make into something. Uh, I'll give you that one for now. That one's, that one's the first one that comes to mind. That's okay, thank you. Okay, thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, well, I'm asking this on behalf of a group of friends. Um, so I've noticed that in the show, Dean has an obsession with BustyAsianBeauty.com. <laughs> <laughs> and if you could make a guess, what start his obsession and when? <laughs> Probably when he saw his first busty Asian. And he's like, I need more of that in my life. I know that's what I thought. I mean... You can edit that out, right? Um, I, I have to give Eric Kripke the credit for that. That was his brainchild, and uh, he he has some some interesting. Uh, his mind works in very mysterious ways, <laughs> and uh, and those are those, That's that's the great thing about great writers is they write details, and that little detail is something that makes Dean a layered character. And it was one of the many reasons why I love playing this character and I love telling this story and, and being a part of this is because of the details. And those details and those layers really make a complex character and complex characters are interesting. Um, which is why after 11 years you're asking a question about a detail that was written in a writer's room on a computer eight years ago. Um, and that's one of the reasons I love doing the show, and I think it's probably one of the subliminal reasons that you guys enjoy watching the show, uh, is because of the complexities of these characters and the details that they have. And, and that's just one of the many things that makes Dean Dean. <laughs> he loves it. He loves looking at those magazines. He loves acting out. <laughs> He likes driving that car, and he likes the family business. So, anyway, there All you right, go. Thank you. Sure. Hi. Uh, 
Hi, Jennifer. Uh, my name is Sonia. Uh, my question is uh, also about the show. Uh, uh, <laughs> Great. <laughs> Why did uh, Sam and Dean uh, react so differently uh, to Cass being possessed by Lucifer? Because it seemed to me and to some of my friends that uh, Sam seemed a lot, a lot less concerned while Dean, Dean was much more upset about it, like losing sleep over it and everything. <laughs> and uh, I was just wondering what do you think the reasoning is behind that? Because Dean is a much more emotionally invested character. <laughs> and because uh, Jensen thinks about his, his role, whereas Jared has basically just phoned it in for the past four years. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I mean, I'm not kidding, but I'll give you a serious answer. Um, you know, it's it's... Sorry, I just realized I was guilty of blasphemy. Um, <coughs> shut up, Kmart. Um, so I I think that I think Sam was more concerned with the big picture and knew that that the possession that Lucifer had with Cass was a necessary evil, um, literally. Uh, and Dean, even though he was also concerned with the, you know, the grand picture, was highly concerned for his friend. And um, I'm trying to think, did, there was, this is the problem with shooting back to back to back to back to back for 23 episodes at a time. You, you shoot scenes and you forget what episode they actually were in because, especially these last four episodes, because they literally were, it, it should have been like a four part ending. Yeah, it feels like that as well. Right, so, did you, I did not see the last aired episode. Was there a scene where Dean and... <laughs> Uh, Amara apparently is about to kill God and uh, kill, kills Lucifer does whatever to him. Uh, we don't really know. Okay, so the scene has not happened yet. <laughs> it's a big scene. <laughs> And it'll explain a lot of what you're asking. <laughs> However, uh, so I, I think Dean was Dean is just really concerned about the 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 outcome of what this is going to do to Cass, and if Cass is ever going to you know recover or fall back on the fray or whatever you know yeah it, it be be back on the team, or if if this is a you know a sacrifice that he's going to have to live with, because um, Dean wouldn't live with that lightly. Uh, oh, <laughs> Look, he likes his teammates, all right? Um, so, uh, and I think Sam, again, Sam was, was, is probably, and I believe this to be Jared's choice, he, he, he might argue differently, but I think that, um, that it was more of a choice to be concerned with the bigger picture, and and one of these like, listen, we'll figure that out once we get this done. So, and it it gets it kind of gets figured out in the next episode. You guys will you guys should should enjoy it. <laughs> I don't want to promise anything, but thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Hi. Hi, Jason. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, no. You're welcome. <laughs> I love it. Uh, we know that you've been going to a lot of conventions, and it's mostly, uh, it's mostly... Yeah, like two, three, four. <laughs> <laughs> team. Uh, so it's mostly like you're asking questions and telling stories, and you're answering questions 
and listening to our stories. And I wonder if there are any questions you want to ask us fans about? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I, I have tons of questions for you guys, um, and I love talking to you. Uh, one of, I, I, in fact, for me personally, um, one of the one of my favorite things, and I have a lot of favorite parts about coming to these things, which is why I, we, which is why we do so many of them, um, is the the back and forth between. The fans, um, and and really, I mean, it's. I even use the term "fan" loosely. Like it, it's it's a this is a family, uh, and so when I can sit in a room like at the at the meet and greets, and I know all of you couldn't can be there, and, and you haven't maybe a lot of you haven't gotten to to experience that, but it's a small room around a table, and it's just a, a, a back and forth, and I can actually talk to you guys, and I can get feedback, and I can ask you questions, and. And granted, I'm fielding, fielding most of the questions. However, the, it's it's just um, there's an ebb and flow that that happens uh, not only there but also here um, that really fuels us. And I, I've, I've said that before. Um, so the questions that that I have for you a lot of times arise when we're filming, and they're questions that I have to ask and then answer for you. Because it's like, gosh, what would they, what would they like right now? I think they'd probably like this. You're probably right. <laughs> You've had too much apple juice. <laughs> Again, right. <laughs> However, I'm gonna go with that choice. Um, <laughs> I'm stalling. <laughs> Okay, I have a question for you. Where are you from? Uh, I'm originally from China. Living where? I'm living in Scotland right now. Scotland! Yes. Do we have any Scots in the audience? Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and that was Misha. Um, You know, there, there's, there is, I don't have a question, not right now. I'll think of one, I'll ask it tomorrow, how about that? Um, but I will say that the, it's, it's less, it's not a question, but more of a thank you. And that is, thank you for asking questions, thank you for being interested. I don't know why you're interested, <laughs> or why you show up but I'm so happy that you do um, because it's, uh, it, it's, it's amazing that what, what we have all created and you're a part of that. And so thanks for being a part of that. Thank you. I know I have so many questions for you guys. Well, I don't know why I can't think of them. Uh, oh, hi. I know a lot of the time. Is there any specific or funny moment when that happened? All of the time. I mean you have to understand that there that there is no other human on this planet that I spend more time with than Jared Padalecki. It's true. Um, so the fact that we play brothers on TV is easy because we feel like brothers off camera. 
and um, we we I've oh, all right. I gotta tell you a funny story. So uh, the the talking at the same time happens because he and I have spent so much time together that we think a lot alike. Um, when we see something, we think of a similar comment. And we say it out loud a lot of times at the exact same time. Um, Jared's quick-witted. I think you guys know that. I'll never tell him that. But the only reason I say that is to compliment myself. Because I too am quick-witted. Which is why we say stuff at the same time. See what I did there? I'm not done. So, she's so cute. Um, so we, we say stuff a lot simultaneously on set. Um, just in between scenes and when something's happening, whatever. He and I will think of the exact same comment at the exact same time and deliberately and deliver it simultaneously. And our camera operator, Brad Creaser, who some of you uh, know, whenever that happens, he looks up and goes, I love when they talk at the same time. <laughs> He's also the same one that whenever Jared, no, not Jared and Jensen, whenever Sam and Dean get into an argument on camera, they'll yell, cut. Which, we've had some pretty heated arguments on camera. When they yell, cut, Brad just goes, I hate it when they fight. <laughs> um, so, aside from Brad, we have, we have many others that, are, that have, have been with us for a long, 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 long time. And are really, really invested in, in, in these characters in this show. And what's, I mean, what's really cool, and I said this years ago, and I can still say it today, which is even, you know, cooler. Uh, I see the guy who does the lighting, the guy who cleans the trash bins, the guy who, uh, who does the grunt work, and really the thankless jobs of production. Uh, and in my opinion, those are, those are the, the, the real unsung heroes. Um, in fact, every Friday we have a $5 Friday. Don't tell the IRS this or Warner Brothers. <laughs> we have a $5 Friday. Everybody pitches in five bucks. They put their name on a, on a piece of paper. And at the end of the night, somebody draws a piece of paper. They won the lottery. They won the $5 Friday. And it could be a couple hundred bucks. It could be a couple thousand bucks. Depends on how much people are, you know, getting into it that day. Um, and I will say that Jared and I, uh, we, we may have missed a few Fridays, but usually we donate. We like to call it splashing in the pot. And we'll, we'll drop in a 50 or 100 bucks and we'll just write the production assistance. And it's so if they win, then they get the pot. So it's like, those are, the, those are really the thankless heroes. Um, but what I was getting to is, they're still reading the scripts. Like I'll look around and I'll see those guys reading the scripts. They don't have to do that. Like they're there collecting a paycheck. They don't need to do that, but they care about this show. And it goes all the way down to those guys. And, it, and that, that's cool to me. They care about the show. And, um, and so, does, so does the rest of the crew. When I see the, the camera operators, you know, sitting in between takes reading scripts and they care about the show, so know that it is in good hands, and people people that work on the show uh, respect the show and love what they do, and, and and I think it shows, which is one of the reasons why I think you're sitting here asking the question. What was the question? <laughs> I was just kidding. I'm done. No. I'm <laughs> You're sweet, and I like your shirt. Thank you. Hi.